everybody. Uh, so I want to give a great shout out to Katie O'Connor and our marketing team who uh, put together that video. Uh, she, she did a really terrific job really reflecting uh, kind of the state and what we want everyone to be uh, building today. So I'm Tao Tran. Um, I lead global product partnerships for Chrome and the web platform team. So that's just a fancy way of saying I basically get to talk to all you guys and talk to a lot of different companies and sites about being early adopters of all of these new awesome web technologies. So it's great to hear from Darren and get a state of where Chrome is and, and the overall web platform. And now I get the opportunity to tell you more about progressive web apps and what's happened over the last year. So I did a lot of reflecting uh, the last couple of days. No, 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 not about the other stuff, um, but, but, but really about kind of where were we last year at the same event. Um, and so I, wanted, I went back and looked at some of the tweets coming out because the Flipkart team had just launched uh, their uh, progressive web app. We're really like kind of pioneers in this space. Um, there was a lot of buzz and excitement about what's now possible for the web. And I really want to echo Darren's sentiments about the emerging markets really leading the way here in terms of constraints uh, leading to a lot of innovation. Uh, but I would say I was a bit nervous about the success, and I didn't know whether it was going to be specific to Flipkart, the region, uh, will progressive web apps actually extend to other verticals and markets. And I wasn't sure if this was going to be a hot thing for like a minute, and then it would just get like shelved away. Um, and so it got me thinking a, a lot about uh, toys. Um, so this is my son, um, and so he uh, recently got a you know refrigerator, got, got a uh, you know. A, a gift of like uh, refrigerator food, um, and wanted me to build a refrigerator. And so I spent two hours painstakingly going through, building custom shelves so that every single piece actually fit, so all the pieces actually fit uh, across all of these shelves. Um, and I think most parents in the audience would know that most toys last about a week because it literally got shelved and empty, and he didn't really play with it anymore. And it, I wondered, uh, would progressive web apps actually have the same fate? So would, was the Flipkart progressive web app a unicorn? And thankfully, that wasn't the case. And so Flipkart continued to invest in progressive web app technologies, actually just did a big refresh of their site. They also extended it to their desktop. And they had a tons of learning this past year as they battle-tested progressive web apps. In fact, they just went through Big Billion Days, which is the biggest shopping event of the year for them in India. And last year, the event was app only because they had shut down their mobile website. And this year, uh, with the Flipkart Lite experience back and the web experience back, they saw as much traffic on the web, wait, as much traffic on the web on mobile as they did on desktop. So it completely affirmed their commitment to bringing the web back on mobile. And I think beyond Flipkart and, and the progressive web apps, we, we wanted to see if we were starting to see momentum in the overall marketplace. We started to see that progressive web apps organically came up as a topic at various conferences. Saw a lot of articles about progressive web apps. I have a Google alert uh, letting me know every time someone mentions progressive web apps. Uh, sometimes I get flooded. Um, and I want to point to um, kind of three articles that really il illustrate that progressive web apps is actually broadening across all industries. So Smashing Magazine wrote a beginner's guide to progressive web apps. Uh, a few months ago, Business Insider uh, wrote about how PWAs are blurring the lines between mobile and web. Uh, and then more recently, Marketing Land, which is targeted at digital marketers, uh, talked about how the progressive web apps could be kind of the next biggest thing. Um, and so it was really terrific to see that you know, both developers and marketers are all interested in these technologies. So Darren talked about the importance of your web audience being a worldwide audience, and we've seen tremendous interest from developers globally. After our Progressive Web App Dev Summit in Amsterdam this past June, we held viewing parties across the world. And so these are folks who actually came, after, it came to actually watch uh, together with other Googlers and with other developers uh, in the region. 17,000 developers showed up across 35 countries, just showing the enormous momentum and excitement for wanting to build with these new technologies. And my favorite tweet, was that there was a viewing party in Bangladesh where there were over 300 attendees, and they were so inspired that they actually formed a human PWA and then tweeted this out. So definitely my favorite tweet of all time. So we're seeing global interest from sites, large and small, across many industries building progressive web apps. And so I wanted to kind of take a moment here and just kind of talk to you about kind of what exactly is a progressive web app and then really tell you real life partner stories uh, so that you can kind of maybe get inspiration for how you want to go about approaching it at your respective companies. 
First of all, it's amazing to see the term progressive web app take a life of its own. We really view it as a shared definition across the entire web ecosystem. And it's great to see folks in the community continue to contribute to what is a progressive web app. And so we wanted to offer kind of our definition, but obviously evolve it to what makes sense for your site. And ultimately, it's about radically improving the web user experience. Probably just saw this in, in, in Darren's talk, but we wanted to make sure that you understand that your PWA is first and foremost about improving your user experience, making sure it's fast, reliable, engaging for all users. And a common question I get is, wait, does that mean I have to build a native app, a PWA, and a mobile site? And the answer is no. <laughs> your web experience should just become your progressive web app. And so that also means that your progressive web app should be indexed and crawlable just like any other website. We've also gotten a lot of questions about this as well. Um, and so I, I wanted to just note that we just posted uh, an updated blog post from Webmaster uh, Central Blog uh, where we uh, talked about you know, updated guidance on building indexable progressive web apps. So definitely check that out. I think it just got posted yesterday. And so we want to let people know that building, building progressive web apps is a journey. And so we wanted to just maybe offer up some of a framework for how to think about building uh, a progressive web app, because people sometimes think, oh, gosh, it feels so inaccessible. This is like, there's so many things I have to do. Um, and so we wanted to say, you know, think about it as a journey. You can start off with a baseline with things like HTTPS, a web app manifest file, and a few other things, and then continue to add on more and more features over time. And so an exemplary one is about pushing your site to add more features, get even faster loading times, provide a more reliable experience offline, and, and even on flaky networks. So the good news is that you don't have to track all this stuff, because we actually heard your feedback, and we put together a baseline and exemplary checklist of things to test and fix. Uh, it's on developers.google.com slash web. You're going to hear that over and over again, because we're really trying to uh, be better about uh, having a central Google resource uh, for building on the web. And Darren already talked about Lighthouse Tool. And so really think about it as your personalized guide for a site to becoming more progressive. We're continuing to invest in Lighthouse, and it will get better. So with the checklist, Lighthouse, along with testing on real hardware devices, you should be on your way to shipping a great PWA. So I'm not going to spend this talk going into detail about Service Worker and like all the various APIs. There are a ton of great advanced uh, sessions about that. Um, but I now want to dig into um, the impact of progressive web apps and why it's a big deal for your users and your business. So we've worked, I've had the really fortunate opportunity to work really closely with a number of partners across the globe. And it's been awesome to have folks actually share stats because they want to kind of contribute back to the ecosystem and talk about the awesomeness of what they're experiencing after they've shipped a progressive web app. So I want to run through a few progressive web apps in different stages to really illustrate the diversity of approaches, regions, and industries. So Darren talked about uh, Alibaba, which is the world's largest B2B marketplace. Uh, and so the scale at which they're operating is huge. Uh, and he went over how they saw a 76% increase in conversions. So I want to add one more detail, because conversions is great, but you really want to make sure that users are coming back to your site time and time again. Um, and so I want to talk about how they saw an increase on iOS of uh, monthly active users, as well as a bump of 30% on Android. And so the higher increase on Android could probably be attributed to the fact that their open rate on web push notifications is comparable to their native app. Again, just increasing the overall reach of your user base. And housing.com uh, is this major uh, growing uh, online real estate platform in India. Um, so we're seeing incredible activity and innovation coming out of India with Flipkart and then startups like housing embracing progressive web apps. And like most startups, housing is obsessed with how to efficiently acquire users to gain market traction. This is probably not something that developers think about, but I bet you your marketing team is thinking about how to bring in new users and how much they cost. Um, and so housing took a look at how much they were spending to acquire an app download versus getting user to uh, come to their mobile website. So the first data I want to offer is that it cost them about $3.75 um, to uh, get users to download an, an Android app. Um, and how much do you guys think it's costing them to get users to their mobile website? 75 cents? 80? 50? Um, 7 cents. <laughs> so I want to pause and want just observe the difference here and how much cheaper it is to get your user to your mobile website. So maybe worth saying, well, you know, app users are usually more loyal, so it may be worth it. 
But for that single app download, you can reach 53 mobile web users. So that's 53 potential re-engagement opportunities. And housing is operating with millions of users, so obviously trying to get more users to their website efficiently is a, a no-brainer. Yeah, just, people should take pictures of this and send it to your marketing team. <laughs> Um, and, but, but it's not only about getting users to your site experience, you want them to make sure that they're getting a really great user, user experience once they arrive. So housing was seeing faster page loads uh, as well as an increase in conversions. And the housing folks are actually here, they traveled in from India and are giving a talk tomorrow morning. Um, so definitely check it out, I believe it's the second talk of the day. So now I want to turn to West Elm. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of adoption in other parts of the world, and so we're starting to see more and more here uh, in the US. And so West Elm is this modern furnishings company, um, and it's on its way to doing about $2 billion in revenue. It's a, and a significant portion of that is actually coming from online. They don't have a native app, so they rely on the web to deliver the best user experience possible. And as you can probably see with, from, your, from your own habits, you're seeing a growing number of users shopping on mobile devices. Uh, so we're going to queue, because I'm actually going to demo an early beta that they just launched yesterday. So I already have it on my home screen. And so uh, one of the kind of key principles or tenets of, of them launching this was that they wanted it to be a hugely uh, immersive experience. Um, and so here you're, you're dropped right into this West Elm experience. You can scroll, everything's super smooth. You see the navigation on top. They took a lot of cues from social applications, so it's highly visual. So I can tap in here. See how smooth everything looks. And I actually want to go through an example of when I showed my sister a desk I just bought from, from West Elm. And so instead of me kind of searching, I, I just look and say, oh, well, I can just go ahead and just tap. I look at furniture. Uh, I see home office, desks. And as I'm scrolling through, I see, oh, there it is. Here's the desk I had purchased. And this is actually how I showed my sister the desk I bought. Very much like a magazine-like experience. Um, and so this is the type of uh, user experience that we're hoping all of you are inspired to build. Uh, back to slides. And so this is where, um, you know, focusing, you know, we talk a lot about performance um, and making sure that, you use, that your site is super fast. Um, but I think we really think of, of West Elm as a great example of how to rethink your user interactions for today's audience, which is about casually consuming and being inspired by things. Maybe the user is not going to purchase every time they come to your site, but, but, but maybe they want to come back and just browse in their few moments where they have some downtime. Uh, so you can check out their early beta at the U URL there. And I want to kind of now turn to Latin America. Uh, so Infobay is one of Argentina's first major, major digital-only outlets. It's a top publisher with a strong presence throughout uh, Spanish-speaking LATAM. And we're actually starting to see growing interest in Latin America for all these new web technologies. Uh, Infobay's primary motivation was speed and delivering news to users as quickly as possible. And it's no surprise, 65% of their traffic is on mobile. And, um, and so they took inspiration from the Washington Post's uh, progressive web app demo from uh, I.O. And they started working with the Post team and leveraging the Washington Post CMS to really roll out their progressive web app. And we're seeing that the InfoBase article pages are loading in less than a second. They're also caching content for offline experience. And so similar to what uh, you saw with, with the CNET demo from Darren, you know, this is really about a smooth reading experience and really what news should be and be resilient to flaky networks as well. And then I want to talk to you about Lyft. So we've seen adoption with retail and publishing sites, and it's great to see another use case here. Um, so for those who are uh, unfamiliar, uh, Lyft is an on-demand ride, on ride-sharing network. It was app-only for a long time. And so they wanted to make sure they could reach users across all platforms. And obviously, we've seen that reach and user acquisition are critical. So they rolled out an M site. I think there was a, an, an article um, a, about rolling out their M site for the first time a few weeks ago. Uh, it wasn't a PWA yet, but it was just an M site just to test the waters. Um, and they had some internal metrics that they were looking at. And uh, after a month, they saw five times more rides than expected coming through their mobile web. So it turns out that people are probably wanting to book rides even before they're able to download an app. So here, here's a GIF of their user experience. Um, and so after they saw that initial kind of success with their M site, they went all in and said, you know, we're going to invest in mobile web. We're going to build a progressive web app. And so their goal right now is to achieve 
feature parity with their native app. So they launched in preview yesterday, ride.lift.com, um, and the team will continue to iterate and add more and more features over time. And so this is about making sure they can deliver a great experience for all you users, regardless of what platform you're on. Um, and so, and, and they didn't want to actually have people download an app if they ne didn't need to. And here I want to point out that they're trying to achieve feature parity by also dramatically reducing the download size. They were uh, gracious enough to share uh, some of their uh, stats around you know, 17 megabytes for Android. Uh, you see the bump in iOS there. And their uh, progressive web app is less than one meg. And so the Lyft team is actually here and will kick off tomorrow morning with housing um, as they deep dive into how they're building a progressive web app and the benefits of being able to deploy updates and experiment quickly um, for the web. So the, the, the kind of the final one where I want to talk about stats a little bit uh, is Make My Trip. So we're going back to India. Um, and Make My Trip is the largest, well, one of the largest uh, travel sites in India. Um, and this, what's interesting here is the Make My Trip folks uh, really start digging into kind of differences in user behavior between uh, the nav native experience and the mobile web experience. Um, and so, so for those of you unfamiliar with the India market, like up to 90% of users uh, will uninstall the app in six months. And so for an infrequent purchase like travel, um, it can be hard to remain on the user device. So after being in the market for a few months, so they shared some insights um, about what they're seeing in terms of their user base. First of all, half of their bookings on their progressive web app are same-day reservations. And not only are they same-day reservations, but this number is actually 30% higher compared to their app users. Turns out that uh, these are generally last-minute users. They just want to book right away, and they prefer to do so on their mobile website. You probably are experiencing the same thing. Like When you want to get something done, you just want to get it done. You don't want to have to wait for, for, for a download. And the other fascinating stat is that um, in taking a closer look at first-time visitors, it turns out that their progressive web app users were booking three times more on their first visit. And so this really shows the web is great at fulfilling the immediacy of intent, which is in this case resulting in more bookings. And so they're also seeing that the destination cities of progressive web, uh, the destination cities are much more widespread uh, for progressive web app users versus native app users, um, indicating that people might be booking once they arrive on, on, on site and they just want to get uh, a, a booking done as quickly as possible. Um, so really terrific stats and really kind of giving us insights into the different user behavior. Um, and so you, you know, they're gonna, they still have a native app experience and that will address and be uh, great for a specific audience, but then they're also building a great progressive web app experience. And so I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, I, I talked a lot about a, a, a bunch of these uh, companies uh, seeing worldwide adoption. Um, and now I want to spend just a couple of minutes talking about how to get started. Um, so, you know, have an idea of what you should be building, and you can see that it can have high impact on your business. But the toughest part is figuring out how to get started, especially if you're part of a large org or you need to deal with a lot of legacy issues. Um, and so you have to take a look at your different user experience and figure out what you want to tackle first. Uh, sometimes you, you can tackle the entire site. Sometimes you can do a section like CNET Tech Today. They, did, they end up shipping a progressive web app for a section. And if you're a larger brand, sometimes it's easier to start with a smaller site to become familiar with the technologies and then extend out to your flagship. So here I want to walk you through a journey that the Weather Channel has gone through over the last year, and I think many of you will relate. Uh, so weather.com is a top 20 site here in the US delivering billions of forecasts around the world across many, many platforms. And Weather is really focused on innovation and new technologies and became really interested in seeing you know, how they could build a much better mobile experience. So their journey started about 18 months ago, where they had to diligently roadmap what they need to do, and knowing that it will take time. They're a major site operating in almost 200 locales. And so they had to prioritize, I think most of you are figuring out how to prioritize transition to HTTPS right now, or if uh, have not already done it, and we have a great session later talking about HTTP2 as well. Um, and so it wasn't easy with ads and analytics, but notice it was starting to get easier as more third parties were prioritizing HTTPS as well. And then in April, they actually rolled out uh, web push notifications across 30 languages. Um, what's significant here, and it's actually now 62 languages because they've continued to expand. What's significant here is in the first three months of rolling out web push notifications, Weather saw a million opt-ins. So they provided the same set of notifications as their app users for the web, but now they're reaching a whole new audience with web push notifications. 
And then more recently, they started looking at integrating service workers and transitioning more of their sites over to a progressive web app. Given the US site was more complex and with more legacy, they decided to tackle their international sites first and have now rolled out progressive web apps in 178 countries, seeing growing traffic in China, India, and Mexico. Um, and the weather team is constantly trying to improve their overall experience. And they've been happy enough uh, with uh, working with these technologies and, and seeing some gains here um, that they are planning to expand uh, to a progressive web app for their flagship US site in 2017. And I think I really want to tell the story because I think we hear a lot about, well, I can't do it in the next three months. We can't figure out how to prioritize. Um, but I think given some, some of you who will have legacy sites, like you need to take a step back and kind of roadmap out um, what, how long it's going to take and what it's going to mean. Um, it's not something that's going to be done overnight. Think about it as a journey. And so I want to kind of maybe walk through kind of the approaches to building progressive web apps. Um, and, you know, I've offered up a diverse set of sites, you know, uh, at how they start building PWAs. And so we started just noticing patterns in how uh, people are, are approaching it, right? So some folks are lucky enough to just build new from the ground up and transition their experience almost immediately. Uh, some people will want to ship a beta to kind of test and experiment, um, rolling out to a small percentage of traffic with the intent of transitioning their main site over, over time. And then some people are able to actually build on their existing experience, so integrating APIs uh, indirectly. And so housing and uh, CNET are actually two examples of where they were able to build new experience uh, from, from, from the ground up. Um, and I think they are, you know, that, that's, if that, that was the right approach for them, um, housing for their whole site, CNET for a, a subsection of their site. Um, and for the beta, you know, as I you know, talked about with the demo with West Elm, you know, they couldn't transition a site right away. It was going to be, t and it was tough to describe what this experience could be like. So even before they got to a beta, they actually built a demo, and then they showed it to their uh, senior leadership. And so now they are going to move to a beta, uh, early beta uh, by the end of the year, and then a public beta next year, um, which is a great path, and then they'll start to kind of move their site over over time. Um, and Lyft, again, is an early preview this week, and they'll continue to iterate. Uh, uh, iterate uh, and bring more and more features to their PWA. And as far as existing sites, I already talked about uh, the, the, the Weather Channel, uh, but Make My Trip actually started first with their hotel section of their site, and then um, they expanded to flights, and now they're con going to continue to add other sections uh, to bring into kind of the progressive web app fold. And so there's no right way uh, or wrong way uh, to, to, to build a progressive web app. I just wanted to offer kind of a framework as you're kind of going back to your teams and saying, okay, section, whole site, new, beta, existing, um, just that you can get the conversation started in terms of how to start building. And so looking ahead, um, you know, I, there's going to be tons of you know, great sessions today. Um, I want to kind of talk about how progressive web apps um, really is, you know, we talked a lot about kind of engagement, conversion, you know, we don't need to know like all the marketing terms at the bottom, but kind of think about progressive web apps as kind of this term for just improving your mobile web experience. Um, and then, you know, accelerate mobile pages. Um, it's just also a great way, if you're having a lot of traffic coming in from search and other platforms, uh, it's a great way to get users quickly to your site from the top of the funnel. Um, and we, we're going to have an AMP and PWA session tomorrow morning where we'll talk about AMP installing a service worker to transition to a progressive a web app, as well as how uh, AMP is using is being used inside of a progressive web app. That we, we get a lot of uh, questions about that. And then for some of you, push notifications is like the, the the one thing that you can do over the next few months. That's perfectly fine. You're able to re-engage users so quickly, like what Carnival did uh, in, in in what Darren went through. And then two things I, I did want to highlight, which are actually after um, my talk this morning. Um, Conversion is such a pain point. Typing is so painful on the mobile web. And we've done ourselves a disservice by not trying to do more here. Uh, but we are now. And so seamless sign-in and uh, one-tap checkout are going to be great sessions where you can basically just understand, you know, your, you know, get users into your experience, build an engaging experience, and then make sure they actually convert um, and, and, and close on them. So it's really about radically improving the overall web experience. So over the last year, we've heard from so many of you the excitement for building and innovating on the web. And again, this really is a journey. Um, and it requires constant iteration, 
probably patience as you're trying to figure out how you're gonna, gonna construct your backend to like fit in with like the progressive web app architecture. Um, but I, it's worth it and I hope you see that today by just seeing the enormous momentum and what people are seeing in terms of success with their various business metrics. And so speaking of iteration, um, I talked in the beginning um, of building a fridge for my son that didn't really stick, so I did try again. Um, so this is actually a hotel room key because I was traveling a few months ago and he uh, was really upset that he couldn't be in the hotel room with me. And so I built, I took a shoe box and then I put um, a little hotel key, uh, the slit and then he was able to, I bought back my hotel key and now he uses it every single day. He literally closes his door, puts in the key card, beeps, and then lets himself into his hotel room. <laughs> and so and he does it every night. He's been doing that every night for the last few months. And so with that, I think that's your inspiration for building great web experience that people will want to use every single day. Thank you.